Welcome to the Mad Trio Podcast. This week we have the California Pariah, Jonathan Charney, James the Fat Man, Stevens, Ryan, who the fuck is that, Preston, and Rob, the old guy. The old guy's here. Blue slips sink ships. Don't talk today. If you must talk, step up and say, Burma shave. <laughs> so we're doing, we're doing um, uh, spots for... Companies that no companies longer exist. Companies don't exist anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, or that, I thought we were doing just, just straight up like communist propaganda. You know, if we, you see something, say something. That's that, actually, that might be next. John John might be, be doing that next. Well, that's actually quasi why I did it, because I've been re-listening to the audio book <laughs> by E.B. Sledge. Uh, it's gone on Okinawa and Peleliu on the Pacific uh, Theater in World War II. So it kind of reminded me when I saw that of that. And I said, couldn't resist. I actually had met a guy... <laughs> about four months ago um, came into my office uh, made some arrangements uh, who was at the Battle of Peleliu. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. And the guy just like breaks into the, into the story. Um, I mean, the, the, it was one of those, one of these old guys who, you know, fucking God bless him, just want to chat with somebody, you know, who starts telling me about how his kids think he's a piece of shit, you know, because he was kind of a bit of a son of a bitch, his words. Um, you know, when his kids were growing up, but, you know, he had, uh, you know, been in war and I guess he had, uh, you know, got a purple heart for that battle, uh, according to him, got bayoneted to a tree, Ouch! which, you know, and he's, and he's starting to give me like the, Oh, I'm sorry if I'm taking up your time. I'm like, dude, you had me hooked with bayoneted to a tree. Like, feel free to talk as <laughs> yeah. much as you want, man. Yeah, really, yeah. So you have, do you have audible Ryan? I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'll forward you the link to this. Um, it's by E.B. Sledge, um, and it's an amazing. What else has he done? I know that I know that author. He did an, he did another book, I guess a sequel that I just found talking about later on in the war, and apparently the Pacific, um, the HBO Pacific that was like the Band of Brothers, apparently is partially based off of that one and another book. Okay, um, and uh, it's he was one of the few people who were in both battles who never got injured at all. That's crazy. And it's just, I've listened to it. This is the second full time through. Um, and it's just an amazing book. If anybody's interested in a little bit of history, um, I recommend that one. And if you ever have a lot of free time, <laughs> um, Rise and Fall, the Third Reich is amazing. I got to warn you, it's a tad bit dry, but it's super fascinating. And we're going to com- completely switch topics to something kind of random. Doctor Who will no longer use a police box for the TARDIS. Oh, you got to be kidding. What on earth are they planning yeah, on I using? heard about that. So this is on giantfreakingrobot.com, one of my favorite ones. So apparently the TARDIS has been one of the most defining symbols of the Doctor Who franchise for over half a century. It has become so iconic that it has actually eclipsed its original inspiration, a 1960s London police box. So basically the... It says later on the article because of potentially of how the police are viewed and yada, oh, yada. Oh, you got to no. be kidding me. Come on. So, All the way to Great Britain with this so bullshit. Those is rumor that the TARDIS is famous <sighs> police box visage, visage is under threat due to how police are perceived within the public. Exactly how and when, <sighs> where the YouTuber Noel required this information. So it's like second or third hand information, but it is possible. Now, I... Now this this comes back to me being a purist because this is one of three movie news I'm going to talk about <laughs> that keep it to the inspiration. Now there was in the Tom Baker, I think it's the Tom Baker era, <clears throat> where they actually talk about how the TARDIS had the ability via the chameleon circuit or something that actually changed the its exterior of it. Now the only question is that it's it's been the police uh, box for fifty freaking years. Yeah, I thought I thought <clears throat> the way they did it is it was the way they could make somebody perceive what it is. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's bigger on the inside. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, even even if it isn't a police box, uh, I mean, I, you know, that was my thought. But anyway, what I don't know, amazing. And technically speaking, it's smaller on the outside. Ah, <laughs> uh, gee. And the thanks other, for clearing that one up. And <laughs> and and the other one under the oh, that's surprising. Apparently, they're turning doc the the new Doctor Who who's a lady. They're turning into to her gay, which is not really a big surprise, but. It was, I, that that is kind of a surprise because it, the, the doctor is like the most asexual fucking <laughs> character on TV no, well, the that I can think doctor of. Doctor technically likes women, so even if he switches to a woman, he'll, he'll still, still like, like women. women. I like that, James. Good good point. So 
It can it. <clears throat> that's the most. I got the vote. That's Good, the yeah. most logical argument I've heard you for got any it. switching. James wins. And the other you one. <laughs> I'll tell you what, too, with with the 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 new the new season. I don't know how much you guys have, have caught up um, on no. the, on the new season at all with the Lady Doctor. I really, really, really like the Lady Doctor. She's fucking awesome. She nails the fucking aloof character. I mean, she's making it her own. Obviously, every every doctor, every iteration has has done their own sort of unique spin. Which, it, I mean, it comes with the territory. So you don't want them to be like previous doctors. You want them to be their own thing. I'll tell you what, though, where the show has lost me is that she apparently has like ninety two different fucking companions now. They used to be they had one, maybe one and a half. She has because, an army. You know, I'm telling you, dude. There, well, okay. Legitimately, there's, um, I think, four companions. No, there's three companions, like three full-time companions. Uh, there used to be four, but one died. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, weird. Yeah. And uh, I must I'm going to leave you for a second. Like, so, <laughs> so she's, was it Polly? Polly Mori? Paula, more than one partner? Polly Amorous? <clears throat> That's it. Where'd, where'd Ryan go? Oh. <laughs> oh, he came in, did the spoiler, and left. I, I like that. So there is <laughs> something that, that we've talked about in the past, and I am not sure. I don't know if this is good or bad. It really depends on how this is done within the universe it takes place in. So James Bond is no longer a male. The, the character, New Bond 007, Haters Be Damned, is an African-American woman or African lady, black chick, or I don't know where, you know, she's black. I don't know what country she's from, so she can't be African-American if I don't know if she's American. Um, <laughs> British American, uh, British, black, fuck it, you know what I mean. This <laughs> PC is confusing as hell. Um, her name is, let's see, when the rumors began circulating that Captain Marvel star... Lashana Lynch, L-A-S-H-A-N-A. My apologies if I butchered your name. Uh, Lynch will be taking the title of 007, the next James Bond movie. The response from the loud minority of online trolls, who both discussed, both discussing and disheartenedly through nothing have been confirmed, far right talks, yada, yada, yada. And this was an Esquire, so of course there's going to be BS. No, as... So I actually don't care if it's actually what it says. If she's taken over the role of 007, I can cool. If she's not James Bond or Jane's Bond, or if that's not her her so-called is, you know. Jane as as, Bond? Yeah, as long as she's a different character and she's just a 007, within that universe, I'm 100% cool with it. I don't know if it'll do well. I really don't. But I'm cool with that. My only issue originally was when I heard they were going to possibly have an African-American gentleman do it is... I have an issue with him being came James Bond because when that universe, the story I heard was, oh, James Bond is just a cover story. <clears throat> that really bothers me. Now you could have, I think you could probably have a black guy named James Bond. I think you're going to be, have a problem with the fans who are purest to the source material. Well, and so of course he's supposed to be British and I think that fits more into uh, what we're looking for, for a Brit <coughs> as yeah. far as the name James Bond goes. So that part <clears throat> doesn't bother me. Uh, I think that if they just go with now 007 is, and, and I hope they don't do something stupid like Jane Bond, <laughs> and you know just they have to they give her a completely different name. Let her have the number, and let them finally catch up to the backstory of how how you become a number, and and maybe they'll do something like that, and then it's just oh all right, so she's now. Yeah, I, I'm, she's now 007. Maybe she was 008 before, or she's a, a new uh, new 00. Maybe maybe James <clears throat> Bond retired and she and, and she just fit in the slot. You know, maybe it's not exactly, exactly. one through eight it, or one through ten. And that's or, one of the things they don't cover in the movies. I don't think at all is exactly as how, how do you get your 00 number. And, and I'm totally cool with that. Like if they're doing it this way, like this, our Esquire article says, I'm cool with it. Cause you're like, you said, double O is just a number. It, it's not, yeah. a, it's not yeah, a, no. I think that'd be perfectly fine. And, and they can name her anything they want. I think it would be great actually uh, to have a, a female uh, double O. I think it'd be really, really cool. I'm totally for it. I don't know. Cool. <clears throat> I, 
Cool for me depends on how they actually introduce the character. And I realize I'm talking about James Bond, who goes from as serious to Daniel Craig to as wacky as the 80s. It's been all over the place. And, so and I don't so think Pierce it Brosnan. matters. So I, I, I do, really don't think it matters. I do think to the audience, and I do think for the ones who are diehard Bond fans, I think it depends on how you introduce her. If she's her name's like, say, Naomi Watts, and she just happens to w, be a 007, I think that's perfect. She's a real person, not a fake Bond. She has a 007. You give her an actual decent backstory that's different than James Bond. And I think that's fine. But I think you have to, within that universe, you have to make her real. It's the old wrestling bit. If, if you base it in some sort of reality, people are going to accept it. If it's goofy as all hell, nobody's going to like it. I guess we'll see. James? Okay. <laughs> did, did we just completely lose Ryan? For- I just, I think we might have <clears throat> lost Ryan completely. <clears throat> Honestly, I've lost all interest in canon for the Bonds. I mean, whatever they want to do. I don't really care anymore, honestly. Yeah, I'm not far behind you. I mean, I... you know, I used to be a big fan of them, but, you know, it's just... I don't know. I mean... I like Daniel I Craig. They were cool I... growing up. I liked as... Like you, I, I like Daniel Craig as yeah. well. Um, but uh, as far as storyline to it, I mean, there really was never a really good continuous storyline throughout the movies. Well, there there was within each each actor who played the Bond. There was some loose individual ties between the yeah, movies, loose. except for George loose. Lazenby. Like, you really got to stretch that <laughs> loose part out, John. Because, I mean... <laughs> There really wasn't like, you know, a continuation of one story to the other. I mean, there was, you know, the character that was the only basically standard thing of it. You know, a womanizer who, you know, basically drank heavy despite which character it was in. And, you know, he had some cool gadgets, went on an adventure, and that was the end of that story. And then you go to the next one, and it's the same thing. You know, he goes on basically adventure, has a good time. That's it. I mean, there's no real, like, oh, this major bad guy keeps appearing. I mean, there was Jaws, but, you know, even still, that wasn't... He was a henchman. He wasn't always. a big character. Yeah, yeah you know. See, that's so, one of the things I like about the Bond but, movies. I mean, there's some continuation within each individual, within the... It, when one movie to the next, but they're self-contained stories. I personally think we're so we so caught up in having every movie connect to the next movie connect to the next movie. I think sometimes there's some uniqueness about movies that are lost. That's one of the reasons the Marvel movies I'm, slightly bug me. But that's what I'm saying is like I'm not really bothered by them going to a female 007 because all it really is is just a spy movie. So she's just another spy. So what if they call her Jane Bond? I don't care. See that 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 part for me, I'm still I'm still not just a purist as I want her to have an actual backstory, mainly because I think if you're introducing a new character, it has to matter. I, I actually think it's kind of shitty for the actress just to play, you know, a female James Bond if she's not her own character. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I don't know what you're expecting it to be. I mean, do you expect her to try to portray it like she's a female Sean Connery, a female Roger Moore, a female Daniel Craig? I would rather her just do her own thing in the Bond <clears throat> universe. That's it. Well, that's, that's what I'm, I care about. That's what I'm hoping. So, that's what I'm hoping, but I'm expecting yeah. I'm, I'm expecting them to make her like a female Sean Connery. And I was hoping Ryan would be here for this, but since he's taking his damn time, um, one of the reasons we haven't done show in a couple of weeks, we had a power outage up here because of PG&E had some technical issues and I had some personal stuff to take care of last week. In the span of the three weeks, we've, we've had a temporary time off period. Um, two people have died, one being a legendary actor who happened to be the first person who played Bond. Um, and all of a sudden I completely forgot his name. Sean, <laughs> Sean Connery. Connery. We just said it. I know. That's why I'm like, <laughs> what the heck? Five minutes ago. <laughs> Sean Connery passed sir, away. Sir. Sir Sean Connery. And I just heard that his ashes are going back to Scotland. He had not Ooh. been back to Scotland since he left. And his promise was, I think after, uh, only way he'll go back is if the, the, the their own independent country or something like that. There was a specific reason. I don't remember what. So he's going to be buried in Scotland. And one of my 
all-time favorite um, game show hosts, a man who literally grew, I grew up with watching on television, Alex, Alex Trebek, Trebek passed away. And he is an old school, was an old, old school game show host, did game shows way beyond Jeopardy, like classic concentration and farther back if you go into it. Um, I'm really bummed because he's one of the, he's one of the few guys that nobody's ever said anything bad of. Like I've heard people say Pat J.F. Sajak was a raging alcoholic, which depending on what area you're in, it was true. <laughs> yeah, but he's one of the very few conservative yeah. people in Hollywood, though. So I'll, I'll give him a pass on the alcohol. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, ju- that, just, happens, <laughs> Let it go. that yeah. just happens to be your proclivity. I would be drinking, too, if I was a conservative in Hollywood. Um, but Alex Trebek, <laughs> that kind of bought, that kind of bummed me out, especially because he died from pancre- pancreatic cancer. cancer. Um, yeah, I'm sorry to hear it, too, and I and I and hopefully his last days were in pain because that is one of the problems with pancreatic cancer. However, he still yeah. had a good run. I mean, he's 80 years old, you know, and uh, I can say that as the old guy. If I was 16, I'd say, oh, that's 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 pretty good. I mean, that's a, oh, that's a long time from now. But being being halfway there, I'm like, fuck, that, that's that's hey, buddy, that's, I'm that's a, pretty close. A lot closer than halfway there. So <laughs> well, I know I'm just and, and pipe the, down. No squirt. <laughs> Sunny. Um, I, I am kind of bummed. One of the reasons is I, I hope Jeopardy can will continue. And I it probably will. And it just comes down. I think if they keep the formula there. And they still make it as basically it's Jeopardy with a different host. I think it'll be perfect because I think the the formula they had was the one everybody wants to watch. So they said the same thing when they were replacing Art Fleming. Now, I grew up w- with listening Art Fleming do uh, Jeopardy. Jeopardy, and I thought he was great. I thought he did a wonderful job. Now, ratings wise, he didn't do as well. And the show actually wasn't that successful. Under the original host? Art Fleming. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. And it uh, it took Trebet to really bring it back. And um, I'm curious he, on why. He had a lot to do with the show's success in, in, in the last, I don't know, 15 years. 30 years. Well, the last, last 15, it's really, really picked up. Uh, audience oh, oh wow viewership and, and really became kind of the mainstay it always was a little bit in the background and you had a lot of shows that came at it like you know who wants to be a millionaire and you know all these other shows that supposedly wanted to try to you know, take a run at uh jeopardy and it never worked jeopardy is jeopardy and uh it's it's yeah. it's going to be difficult to uh i don't care what kind of show you try to put up against it. it's going to be difficult <laughs> and you got to understand too jeopardy and wheel of fortune were a packaged packaged deal with uh, Merv Griffin. He 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 kind of designed both shows to go both together and be together, and that's why they've been together for you know the last couple of decades uh, as a package. It was always Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. That that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I I think I think they'll do fine. I think the only thing is you have the fact you got a new host. You have that. That, that trial period. It's like switching from Leno, excuse me, Johnny Carson to Leno. I think you're going to lose some audience, but I think once people get in the flow of it, it's going to be good. I, I Screw the new guy. I'm not a big fan, but. Mainly because, well, the new guy, you talked about the, the, the Jimmy. I don't like his interview style. You know, he's a performer more than he is an interviewer. And that's and, why. And that's the difference. And that's what that show kind of misses under him is, uh, but he's a, he, he's a skill in in singing and impressions and skits and all that. They're fantastic. But as an interviewer, mm. Jay Leno has a very laid back interview style. Now I actually think Johnny Carson's kind of a combination of, if you like compare modern hosts of, of, of Jimmy Fallon and Leno, because Johnny Carson was really good at the skits. Yeah, and, but he was a complete comedian. Yeah, no, true. A big difference. And uh, Jay Leno uh, was just a comedian. Yeah, yeah. And uh, to me, they'll never be. I, I I love Johnny Carson. And if if you look back at any of his um, shows, <laughs> you can get all the best ofs Johnny Carson. You will spend the whole hour or more, or whatever it is, laughing. Literally just laughing because they're just incredible. So I recently discovered, it's Pluto.tv, it's a app, right? It's an ad-supported right. um, 
web app for yeah. uh, IPTV. They have a Johnny Carson channel. Mm. It's 24 hours of Johnny Carson television um, mm. from beginning to end of the Tonight Show. Uh, you guys got to watch it because he's some of it. I, I think just because the age does not necessarily work with modern time. But if you watch Johnny Carson, he's amazing. He's yeah. he's. Oh, and some of the guests, especially if you got any of the Rat Pack members and Bob Hope and the old school comedians, they're hilarious. Yeah, I, I think what, what's happening is we're we're starting to age out uh, on the audience that watches <laughs> Judd and Carson. But there's still enough people around that either remember him or know of him and uh, realize what a genius he really was in, in making The Tonight Show what it really is. So that, that's my opinion. I Johnny Carson is the best. Now, he... Uh, he took over for from <laughs> Steve. Oh, Lord. Alan Allen. Steve Allen. Steve Allen. No, Steve. Uh, yeah, no. It's. I don't think it was Steve Allen. Yeah, maybe it was. Was that? So, somebody hit. I ain't got me curious. Hit, hit Google and take a look. But anyway, um, and, and talking about it, that was complete. Again, a complete difference in personality and style. And so I, Steve I, Allen. Yeah. So the program has, was, has was, the yeah. principal has had six principal hosts since history. Steve Allen from 45 to 57, Jack Parr, Jack Parr from 57 yeah. to 62, Johnny Carson from 62 to 92, Jay Leno from, uh, from 92 to 2014, Conan O'Brien from 2010, <laughs> 2009 to 2010. If you blinked. Jimmy Fallon from 2014 and on. So I guess he took it over from Jack Parr. Jack Parr, yeah. That's P-A-A-R. Yeah, I forgot about Jack Parr. And Jack Parr was, un unfortunately, was a bit forgettable, to be honest with you. I mean, he was good, but he wasn't a Johnny Carson. I wonder if any of those... he wasn't a Steve Allen. I wonder if any of those those actual episodes with Steve Allen and Jack Parr exist. Oh, I'm sure they do. Because a lot of those shows back in the day just... <coughs> Be, uh, they either they're one-time broadcast or because tape was just so expensive. If it existed, it got recorded. It's like a lot of the, Na the a lot of the live NASA footage got re-recorded because they're trying to save money. Nobody ever thought that oh, some some person ninety years from now is going to want to see the original unedited non-televised footage. Hmm. But however, a lot of it's saved because of television. So yeah. Anyway, so. <laughs> So Johnny uh, Johnny Carson Channel, how how on Pluto? Pluto? Pluto. Pluto. Okay. I was hoping Ryan would be back. I'm, I'm really tempted just to harass him because now he he's it's still it says twenty four minutes of him just, you know. He might have got a business call, being honest with you. I mean he No, I mean, but uh, the phone, it still says twenty four minutes of him being on the phone. Oh. And for a bit Is he I, muted? Is your phone for muted? Us? No, it's not muted. Huh. Yeah. So I'm assuming he might have forgotten, or maybe he switched. But <laughs> I just think it's funny; it's still going. Well, so hang just, up and call him back. Well, why not? Yeah. So, hey. um, I'm I'm kind of bummed about Sean Connery mainly because one of my favorite roles is a role he didn't really like. It's actually the role that caused him to quit acting was the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Mm. I thought he was good. I, I can't believe he didn't like that. He didn't like the experience. He said there. I don't remember what, but there was something about it that just made him quit acting for good. I like that movie. Oh wow. Too bad. Because <clears throat> I love the combination of all the old time movie monsters and Dorian Gray and yeah. I thought it was perfect. Roland Donna. Are we waiting to see a friend? I Do just want to see if he answered. Answer? I, I bet he got to work. Something something's going on. Or not. I did say that it was slow. <laughs> so, maybe so yeah, he did say it was up. slow. Maybe so, it picked up all of a sudden. So that that that's hope I don't have to edit that last section out. Mm. Why? Um, you didn't get the whole name. Don't worry about it. So, okay, this is just going to be a quickie because I posted it. And I don't remember this. So in the movie Pearl Harbor, Dory Miller, Cuba Gooden Jr., is a mess man with no formal rifle training, runs to an open anti-aircraft gun, shoots down multiple Japanese airplanes. That really happened. Then pulls out wound wounded sailors through 400 yards of flaming wreckage to safety. It feels like a typical corny Hollywood theatrics, except the fact that it's real and exact happened exactly like that. Yeah. Yeah, I I'd love stuff like that because it's kind of forgotten heroes of history. Um, were were people saying that it was crap? I mean, just just curious. I I think I think what I heard was people. Oh, that's not plausible. Is it, it, you know, there's a lot of people that said that. No, that wouldn't happen. That's not plausible. The problem was is it really did happen. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I, I, I think also part of it was the fact that it's, it seems unlikely it's so Hollywood because it's kind of a typical shtick. You know, this guy runs to save people. You know, it, it is kind of an old bit in Hollywood. Yeah, but I mean, this, besides the fact that they did a terrible job with the movie Pearl Harbor, there was a lot of truth in what happened. Right. A lot of that right. really actually happened. Now, well, my they took issue they took World War Two. They, they turned it into a love fact, story. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They added so much stuff that didn't need to be in there. Now, granted, was there a love story that happened in World War Two? There was hundreds, probably thousands of love stories that happened because they were thinking they were going to die, so they went out and got laid. So, I mean. Part of it, <laughs> but you know, I mean, it didn't need to be in there. They didn't need to, you know, do the Hollywood trying to get some chick to not be bored by a war movie, I guess. I <laughs> yeah, don't know. maybe. Huh. I don't know what their logic was, but that part ruined the movie, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, but I mean, a lot of the stuff that happened, the <clears throat> sailors that died trapped in ships after it happened, the rescues. A lot of them actually happened. I can't say all of them happened, you know, because there was some in the background where, you know, soldier would jump in front of soldiers. That thing happened, but I'm not saying it happened the way that they portrayed it, but a lot of the big action sequences literally happened. Have, so, I don't know. <clears throat> Have you guys seen the new Midway movie? It was Midway 2019. Yeah. I just you know, it. I haven't yet. <clears throat> I just recently watched it. I don't mm -hmm. know if I talked about it the last time we were here because I think I finished it last week, the week before that. I was really impressed, especially the way they handled the Japanese side. Mm. Um, it was fairly respectful, which kind of surprised me because usually, like those movies like that, it's heavily one side or the other. It seemed fairly even handed. Um, I was really impressed. It even showed this. Uh, this one sailor who, uh, excuse me, he's a fighter pilot, fighter pilot flying um, in the movie, ends up getting a bag mix of air, ends up permanently screwing up his lungs. Real story. Right. Actually, guy actually happened. I was just really impressed. And it's two hours and 18 minutes. I actually think they could have made it longer. And I think, it, you know, because at the end of the movie, I'm like, I want more. Come on, keep going. <laughs> it was really well done. Um uh, and doesn't John Wayne did a midway, didn't he? I know he did Sands of Iwo Jima, which, oh, by the way, another great movie if you haven't seen. Um, well, I don't know. This is not RFR. <clears throat> I don't know. I didn't do any homework. No, well, James knows stuff like this. I was wondering if he knew because I don't remember if it was <laughs> all right. a remake. It's all on you, James. <laughs> do you remember? Yeah, I, think he, I think he did. It's been a long time since I've looked at his stuff, but yeah, I'm pretty sure he did a Midway movie. Yeah. Oh, actually, maybe. Okay, so, <laughs> so it's uh, geez, since I'm hoping Ryan shows back up, but I, I don't think he's going to. I might bug him a little bit. I think it's with um. <sighs> By the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever used IMDb, it sucks right now. I don't know what happened to it. But whatever they did, they could they stop. They did some stupid update a while back. Um, and it's never Charlton um, Heston. It's Charlton Heston, Henry Fonda, James Coburn, and Glenn uh, Glenn Ford, nineteen seventy six. Yeah, seventy six. Okay, so that's that one's another good one. Charlton Heston was an amazing actor. Actually, Henry Fonda was too. Henry Fonda is in one of my favorite um, Abraham Lincoln movies. Hmm. So anything interesting happened besides... Wait, what the... are you talking about for John Wayne? I thought John Wayne did a, a Midway movie. I guess I was thinking Charlton Heston. Not in 1976, he didn't. No, I know, because he died in a couple of years later. Okay, I was going to say he Hi, died in 79. <laughs> yeah, so sorry. For some reason, I thought he did it. I must have been thinking... Um, I must have been thinking of uh, uh, Sands of Iwo Jima because he plays a fighter pilot in the movie, and I must have just gotten the wires can uh, dis, uh, missed the lined. But I swear John Wayne did a movie like that, but uh, I don't I, remember. I don't know. I wasn't going to dig through his career. 
I I thought he did, but I guess not. So um so beginning of November, this one kind of got swept under the rug by a bunch of other things going on. The Central Crime Branch, did you hear that they actually caught ten drug peddlers off the dark web? No. And seized nine million dollars in um oh gosh, I just oh, lost Bitcoin. The actual currency. Um Bitcoin. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I read that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting that they caught them and then they actually arrested them off of the whole thing. It was pretty interesting that they caught them off the dark web, though. I don't hear very many, um, many things about that. True. You, you, you know, you, 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 some television shows jump in a little bit and talk about the dark web and, what you can yeah. dark web, and you know they always go. It's always the bad evil side, which it yeah mostly is. How's that way back? <laughs> I have no idea. But um, that was bad. yeah. They they uh, seized six hundred and sixty LSD papers, three hundred and eighty six uh, MDMA, one hundred and eighty ecstasy tablets. 12 grams of MDMA crystal, 10 grams of cocaine, 12 mobile phones, three laptops, two, two, two wheelers. And, uh, a partridge in a pear tree. It's all of it worth around, um, uh, 9 million. I don't know if that's ruples. I think it is ruples. Just the way they're, uh, holding it. So uh, yeah. Rush, the Indian Rush. rupee, the Indian rupee. Oh, no, that's rupee. right. That's right. That's yeah. right. It was the Indian currency. Isn't MDNA yeah. and ecstasy the same thing? Yeah, but I think they're talking about the MDMA being in its uh, oh, non-pressed well. form versus oh. ecstasy being in the tabs. So uh, it only came out to be worth $121,000 in U.S. currency, but still, that's a lot of money. I wonder what the, the, the penalty in India is for that probably execution because that that would be a lot here. i mean if I'm that was if, no if that was here as long as you're not in oregon that's a life sentence <laughs> yeah oregon well, well yeah, oregon. oregon just kind of doesn't yeah so but, damn, yeah, wow. I thought, that was quite a bit of drugs that they found i've got a, i have i have a feeling that um things like this have been going on in um on the dark web and the federal government in some form or other doing these things and they just don't bring it up. I mean, they don't talk about it. They don't advertise it. Uh, I yeah, think probably you know, not. Yeah. I think I, cause I believe that, uh, the FBI has a whole cyber branch that's dedicated to just that. And, uh, yeah, they have a TV that's show why about I it. kind of thought it was interesting that, you know, you got some news about a drug bust of the dark web. Because, mm -hmm. I I mean, it's not something you see every day. Right. Because didn't the U.S., didn't we just get, like, you know, a couple of million dollars or billion dollars worth of Bitcoin from something off the dark web, too? Well, that's what I thought the story Probably. was that James was talking about. But obviously, it's a different story. But I, I agree. I thought I wanted yeah. to say it was something like nine or ten. See, now I can't remember if we're talking just millions or billions. But it was enough yeah. money, let's just put it this way, that it oh. put a big dent in the... DLJ says it seized, seized over $1 billion in Bitcoin oh, from okay. the Silk Road. That that was it. Uh, see, my, uh, my brain is killing me. Yeah. I am curious what they're going to do with a billion at Bitcoin. I, that's the part they're, that's... They're going to go down to the local... <laughs> <laughs> the gas station. Turn. Go sevens, go sevens. <laughs> let it ride. We want to. We'd like to. We'd like to exchange this. Can you, <laughs> Biden can, needs a new pair of shoes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm kind of curious because that's the one thing. Because I know it's. They'll bank it. <laughs> They'll bank it. Double the well, money. That's, that's we what might be able to pay the, the debt off. The, I'm kind of wondering. Debt off. Are they going <laughs> to? Everybody I hear saying they're going to auction off Bitcoin, which the idea of that makes me laugh. But if I were them, I would keep it because they don't have to give it back. 
There's no legal reason why they have to actually release it in the wild. I would think I would think they would want to make it in some form that they can actually put it in a real bank, <laughs> and so they're going to have to 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 launder the Bitcoin in some way or another. I'm think I'm thinking there's some geek in glasses going, "It's worth five more percent. Let's go now." You know, type of <laughs> some 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 dude in a fedora, overweight with a neck beard, is just there waiting for the right mount. Let's see, two days ago, about a billion worth of Bitcoin that had sat dormant since the seizure of the Silk Road marketplace in 2013, when the biggest underground drug websites on the dark web suddenly changed hands. <laughs> Who took it? Mystery's over. It was the U.S. government. This is according to <laughs> TechCrunch. In a statement Thursday, the Department of Justice confirmed that it had seized the 70,000 Bitcoins generated revenue from drug uh, sales in Silk Road from the hacker known as Individual X. Um... Uh, at the time of the seizure Tuesday, the Bitcoin was worth one billion. Uh, they oh. should uh, they should just cash it now. I mean, if there's a legal way to do it, um, that's amazing. What, which uh, the Silk Road? I remember when it came out. It was what? Uh, no, one, I, I was trying to think of which law enforcement division are we talking about. Uh, it just says U.S. government. Government didn't talk about which one. Uh, do, 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 FBI, do, do. DOJ. Doesn't say, huh? No, says uh, just says Silk Road at the time was one of the most sophisticated and extensive criminal marketplace of the internet. Per Justice Department statement, in 2013, its founder, Administrator Rosh Ulbricht, was arrested and the state seized. Ulbricht was convicted in 2015, sentenced to two life terms, an additional 40 years. Holy shit! They basically threw the book out of him. That's what 100 and something years. How about that? So they they could almost. You know, depending on which uh, agency it is, a billion dollars, that would run them for a number of years. <laughs> Look at all the toys they could buy with that kind of money. Bunch sure. of Xboxes. <laughs> so, um, there you, go, you get a free Xbox. I, there you I, go. I, I have one more, just because this was the most random headline I ran into. Oh. This is from the Huffington Post, but it's it's quasi horrible and hilarious. But it's, I cannot say this guy's li- name to save the life. Well, then me. why do the story? Brazilian man killed by a cow. That fell through his roof. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, that's what we're talking about, that's, I guess. A cow that came through the roof. It's a great headline, mm-hmm. and that's what caught me. It's like, a Brazilian, Brazilian man died in Tuesday due to injuries sustained when a cow fell through his roof of his bedroom while he was <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> Lenny was, uh, uh, while, it's J-O-A-O. Okay, sleeping. Don't worry about saying his name. Just say a Brazilian man. Yeah, that's fine. We, a Brazilian was, man and his wife are sleeping in bed. The wife when a, survived? When a 3,000-pound <laughs> cow, <laughs> uh, cow crashed the roof, reports the Telegraph. The cow is believed to that's escape from... a fat from, cow, man. <laughs> the cow is believed to escape from a nearby farm, then walked on the roof, which uh, abuts a steep walked hill. Walked on the roof? Upon unable to support the load, the roof caved in, at which point the bovine fell eight feet onto the man side mm. of the bed. Mm. Well, his mm. wife and the animal were fine. Dis, uh, the gentleman suffered the a fractured... The the animal were fine. <laughs> that's how it says. <laughs> like the, the, the man suffered a fractured leg and was taken to the hospital. After spending several hours at the hospital, the 45-year-old man passed away. From a broken l- leg? Like a result of internal <laughs> bleeding. He did have a 3,000-pound animal fall on him. Yeah, but still, broken leg? Maybe you don't want to have a broken leg in Brazil. <laughs> Man, yeah, medical treatment isn't, isn't that great. Being crushed by a cow in your bed is the last way you'd expect <sighs> to leave this earth. Wow. Uh, a Brazilian newspaper in transition provided Telegraph, but in my view, it wasn't the cow that killed our Brazilian man. It was the unaccepted time. I'm, I'm sorry. It was an acceptable time he spent waiting to be examined. Ah, see, I knew it was the medical treatment that killed him. So, it wasn't the John, cow. Why are you laughing at this so <laughs> Because much? it's just I mean, ridiculous. The poor guy died. <laughs> I, I just tells you if you're going to go to Brazil... Which I don't recommend in the first place. But if you're going to go, better than Venezuela. Don't let uh, not by much. Don't let um, don't let the medical system kill you. The it's, weight will kill you. I, I have to. Well, I have to be honest. It's it's a horrible way to die, but it's it's kind of it's up there in ridiculousness. It's like the guy who 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 died from being defecated on by an elephant. It's just the last thing you would expect some way to go. It's horrible. It's sad. And the worst part about this, gentleman, the worst thing about this gentleman is he. Uh, it was he, your timer, wasn't it? He died horribly. I mean, he he a cow fell on him. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Okay. So, yeah. uh, you guys uh, collect coins at all? Quasi. Okay. Well, 
How about I pennies? Do you ever look at pennies? I've got a bunch Sometimes. of weird pennies. All right. So, what about you, Ryan? Um, what am I flipping for? Uh, pennies. Do you uh, do you uh, do, you know? Do you, do you ever look at the change that you get when you go? Because we don't use change as much as we used to anymore. But. Um, generally not pennies so much. Although I'll, I, I sometimes will flip them over see if I got some you know some old uh, uh, wheat pennies. Wheat, yeah, yeah, the old the old wheat All pennies right. or something like that. I got a new one for you guys to look for. All right, it's nineteen sixty nine penny. Party on, dude. Could be worth about one hundred thirty thousand dollars. Really? Yeah. So it was one of these best kept secrets. It was. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me see if I can get to the details. Uh, it's a nineteen sixty nine, and it's an S mint marks, and it's because of an error while die casting the coin. Um, they considered part of it to be a counterfeit scheme that was originally discovered in 1970, but the government later confirmed and found that the mint mark were indeed genuine. So apparently there is a 1969 S-series double-dyed Lincoln cent coin that could net you somewhere around $130,000. Wow, uh, interesting. Yeah. There's, uh, there's huh. known to be 40 of them out in the wild. So they, they basically took them out of circulation because they thought it was part of some some fraud thing? Correct. Apparently, at first, they thought it was some kind of counterfeit thing. Wow. Uh, the, the government came across it because they couldn't believe this actually came out of the mint. And then when they went to look at the die that was stamping this particular penny, it was indeed an error. And, and it was after they had already pulled them, huh? As many as they could, yeah. But yeah, apparently, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So there's, you know, so you got a chance. Um, some dude here not too long ago, a few years ago, actually got, uh, $70,000 for his. And they're saying now, if you come up with one, it's worth about 130,000. Wow. That's nutty. 1969 S series penny. That's what you guys need to look Now, does look S for. series mean it was minted in San Francisco? That's that. You know what? They didn't say that in the article. That was my assumption that S was San Francisco, but, um, you know, I'm not I'm not an aficionado any longer of coins and what coins are worth and what the stamps actually mean any longer, uh, because I'm not sure San Francisco stamps coins anymore. I thought it was specifically just in Denver. You know? Yeah, but '69 it, it could have could have been. been. Could have been. I, I didn't think they were around anyway. At that point. So start looking at your pennies, guys. If you see a 1969, yeah, no you know you might get excited. <laughs> so. Uh, I'll tell you what. Speaking of speaking of random coins, um, going through an old closet uh, a couple weeks back, and I come across this coin that um, on one side had a Roman numeral. I can't remember what it was. It was it was like a like a like a three or a five or something like that. I don't I don't recall. I had to go find it. Um, on the other side of this, um, depicted a, a a particular sex act. <laughs> oh my. Now, it immediately struck me because I, I just saw I saw the the you know this odd this odd shape on it. I'm like, the hell is that? And I kind of pulled it into the light, and I'm like, <laughs> what on earth is going on? And it was like a solid metal coin. Hmm. Okay, not like some you know like game coin or I'm you know my first instinct was oh maybe this came from some some old sex game or something like that, right? You've had an interesting uh, life. Yeah. So. I, I'm like, okay, this is weird. So I Google sex coins. <laughs> and it's a thing, what would huh? come up. It is if so a thing. Exist. It's <laughs> okay? a thing. Yeah. It is an absolute thing. Matter of fact, they have some really, really nice looking sex coins out there. It's like <laughs> some some mint is, is putting together these coins that are like gold rimmed, you know, silver plated on the interior with, you know, dip, you know, each with like the Roman numeral and, yeah. and the sex act on the other side. You've seen them? Yeah. So I know John, I Jonathan apparently, has popped it up on our screen. I, I see. It, I, yeah. I just Googled it. And um, the fact these are a thing, I'm not quite sure. Like the old comment to salute it or you shoot it. You didn't know about this? I've never heard so about it. So apparently these go back to about. These have been around 600. for a while. Uh, the 1600s? Uh, talking, no, it was like 600. Oh, Wow. Okay, so apparently the the, the, the um, either the Greeks or Romans or, or both 
um, had these particular coins and they found them through archaeological digs all over the place and stuff like that, but they've never really been able to associate them with a particular monetary value um, or or have any sort of like, you know, quote, historical significance to them. Are they called Nero's? The, <laughs> I fucking wish. Caligula's. Um, <laughs> I'll, tr- I'll uh, trade you two Caligula's <laughs> for Nero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. But, um, so the the working sort of hypothesis with this is that they were this sort of subclass of of coin of of money. Of course, they were a subclass. Yeah, they're like they're like was, a, uh, yeah, they're like a military challenge coin. Well, it, I mean, so to speak, right? So the again, the working hypothesis basically being that when like any particular sort of let's say illegitimate business such as a whorehouse, you know, didn't take particular you know current legal tender they didn't take they might have these coins that are that are sort of traded under the table or or on the black market so to speak you know for for these particular sex acts and each of the monetary values on the other side you know be it from one i can't remember what they what they range from like one to nine or something like that (laughs) each of them had a different sex act depicted on the other side therefore leading people to believe that maybe this like the number three with the you know uh, 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 oral sex being depicted on the other side, meant that, that for three of these you get that. <laughs> okay, you know. Do right, like you think you have an old? One, no. This is worth one blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you have an old original coin, or this is a no? Pop-off? Absolutely not. This is this is definitely some reproduction. <laughs> you know, from, from many, many years after, but you can actually go online and see those, those neatly minted ones, but you can find like old, old Roman sex coins. Well, I, I'm going to use one of my, my, my favorite lines regarding this, a night with Venus, a lifetime with Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> and that, 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 well, what was it from uh, that movie men of honor? Uh, remember gentlemen that, uh, one night stands may be over in the morning, but syphilis lasts a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ju- just ass old Scarface. <laughs> um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it down just a tad bit <laughs> because really, how do you top that? About you know, uh, two Caliglas and a Nero give you a, an interesting evening. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ken. But uh, now, jeez, I don't even know how I transition. I, I need how music. Go, how's this segue going? From <laughs> hold I on, I need hear a, this one. I need a okay. Need something. Um, <laughs> so. If you guys don't know me, I'm a huge Scooby-Doo fan. It was one of the things I grew up watching. And any time after school, it was always on, so I'd always watch a couple episodes of it. Ken Spears, a Hanna-Barbera alum known for co-creating the characters of Scooby-Doo, died. According to his family, the veteran writer and producer passed away from (coughs) compilations related to... Compilations. Compilations. (laughs) Well, hey, he died with a smile. He died with a smile on his face. He must have one of those coins <laughs> from from compu- uh, com- complications. From, <laughs> Sorry, yeah, that's great. From from Louis Body Dementia, uh, which was the same thing. I my, needed that. Thank you. You're welcome. John. But from from Louis Body Dementia, which, if I'm not mistaken, was the same thing that um, our beloved Robin Williams had, <laughs> and. Uh, he didn't have. Okay, he, did, he didn't. I'm completely confused as to what the hell you're talking about now. John. So, so uh, let me restart. So, can I? I need. <laughs> I need to restart. I need a rewind. I need. Left off. I need a rewind button. Clarify. Um, so basically, what happened is this gentleman worked for Hanna Barbera, and he co-created the characters of Scooby Doo. He was a veteran writer and producer. Passed away from Louis body dementia. <laughs> At 82 years old. One of the reasons I brought it up is is not only was he one of the basically co-founder of some of the my favorite characters in history, but was involved in, in my opinion, one of the best animation houses in the country and the world was Hanna Barbera, um, who are both Hanna and Barbera are, are are both dead, been dead for quite a while, and so I was I yeah. was. What would, what would you say, James? Oh, I was going to say, I mean, yeah, definitely, definitely one of the most prolific, uh, uh, for sure. Um, now, I mean, look, I, as far as like the animation house and what those dudes put out was, was a mess, you know, and, and not, you know, take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt, because obviously not everything you do can be spun into pure gold. Um, 
However, you know, their batting average definitely did include shit like Grape Ape and Sigmund the Sea Monster, which if you've watched any of those beyond you being eight years old, are the most atrocious pieces of shit. Hey, I I actually liked Grape Ape. I I, I really yeah, liked when was it. the last time you've seen Grape Ape? For at least ten years. I'm surprised it's been that recent, but I mean, there's no way you didn't look at yourself like, wow, I must have been a dumb eight year old watching this. Eh, I, I, I don't, I, I've always been a fan of the medium. So for me, it was just something I enjoyed. Um, for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, see, that's why I was always more of a, a Warner brothers fan because you can absolutely just, you can watch bugs money. And then later on when you're an adult, watch the Marx brothers and be like, Oh, this is, this is, this is the same thing. I understand this type of, this, this type of comedy and, and all of these jokes were, were working on a few different levels, you know, things like that. But stuff like your your great apes or, you know, the aforementioned Sigmund the Sea Monster are just, just the most on the surface, you know, mindless sort of entertainment. It was just, they were churning stuff out. And again, all the props in the world to the animators for, for those things. Because one, they did churn out some, some classics. Uh, However, you know, the Flintstones, Yogi Bear, and those sorts of things. They 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 did do stuff that's on the verge of racist, if not racist. Um, the Amazing Chan Clan, the Amazing Chan and the Chan Clan, which actually is a pretty cool cartoon. I I've always kind of enjoyed it. It's about a a family of Asians who are mystery solvers. So the seventies were really big, and everything solved mysteries. Did um, um did but, they do uh like Quick Draw McGraw and stuff too? I'm pretty sure, like they did see Adam yes. Ant, Banana Splits, Bernstein Bears, oh, Birdman, Banana the Galaxy Splits Trio, um, CB Bears. I'm pretty sure it's, holy, I forgot they did Captain Planet and the Planet Tears. Oh, Captain Planet with Hanna-Barbera? Did I ever know that? I, I, I must didn't. have known that. I'm pretty sure. I don't th- think I knew that. I'm pretty sure they did Quick Draw McGraw. I'm almost Because if they positive. did, I loved me some Quick Draw McGraw, man. And then... Um, uh, what was it? Um, shit. Um, I'll come on to <clears> the <throat> second. El Cabong. Yes. Uh, yeah, that was, that was some classic stuff. This is, uh, none of which you could do today. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. So. <laughs> Unless you're a pro wrestler who gets to hit people over the head with guitar, with guitars. That's funny. Oh, man, you guys remember secret squirrel? Mm-hmm. Secret squirrel never gets talked about. Yeah. I so quick draw show. McGraw was occasional, uh, occasional appearance in, uh, in other Hanna Barbera. So he had his uh, Hanna Barbera. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, he did kind of pop into a bunch of other people's things or he would be some little interstitial between a couple other cartoons or something. So they did things like uh, Quick Draw McGraw, Johnny Quest, the 64 to 65, oh, which is yeah. one of my all-time favorite cartoons, Johnny period. Um, which was which which, only which, ran for the one season, which is amazing. You want to know why? I it, actually it, have, would love to know why. So apparently it was so violent. There were a lot of people complaining <laughs> really? to take it off the air. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, so there's been actually three different versions of Johnny quest. And I know this because I'm a cartoon fanatic 64 to 65. There's an eighties one. And they introduced a character named hard rock. And later on, there was, um, sometime in the mid nineties, there were the real adventures of Johnny quest. And they were made by two different houses, uh, two different animation houses. And you can tell because the animation between the two looked nothing fucking alike. Oh, I, yeah. Well, Hanna Barbera, I mean, regardless of, of when they made it looks so specific, you know, there's one um, uh, thing that I've been looking for for years, and I and I really can't find any sort of a, a, a compendium for it. Um, is the um, uh, what was it called? It was the the Flintstones Comedy Hour. Oh yes, you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. It was it was the the kids were grown up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and Bam Bam were were teenagers. They lived next door to the um to the uh, to the to the like the Munster type family. I can't remember their um their names but uh but yeah it was it was all just these random ass adventures the fucking schmoo made an appearance in like a half a dozen episodes um barney and 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 fred were like cops in the mountains they they go off in some random adventure you know in like the the middle east and you know get like a genie and it was just so random from from anything you'd ever seen with the uh, the thing, but it was way more like a variety show, um, and very very seventies. Like the opening of the show had like like Bam Bam and Pebbles rock band, you know, which was uh, 
yes. very much like Josie and the Pussy Pussycats kind of style. And they had Remember like that? they had like the greaser characters or greaser yeah, right. characters. Yeah, 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 the greaser characters. Um, it's, it's I think a, it was the Frankenstones. That's right. It must have been the Frankenstones. They, they were their neighbors. And it's amazing to me, like how much of these cartoons. Um, don't exist like one of the reasons i actually know of them um part of it is because of um boomerang they were yeah, f- right yeah um and i this is one of the things i think is a bummer because some of these cartoons are amazing because especially the 60s when my dad was again a lot of these cartoons had to have moral some sort of moral messages um i don't know what johnny quest some of them didn't johnny quest definitely did not unless it's okay with calling people savages and taking hallucinogenics <laughs> Um, but it was definitely big. And when we were kids, a lot of the cartoons definitely had like GI Joe had the, the little thing at the end going and knowing is half the battle. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Everything had to have that PSA. Well, you know, to the, to the point where like the early South parks up until about maybe the 10th, 15th season, something like that always had like Stan or Kyle at the end going, and I've learned something <laughs> today and they'd give some 30 second monologue about, you know, why whatever they were doing was wrong or something like that. And but I remember used to I used to try to convince my parents. My mom would walk by me watching The Simpsons or something like that, and the only thing that she would hear is Bart Simpson say "hell" or "damn," right? Of course. So your kid is all of a sudden watching some filth on TV because that's the only thing she heard. Um, and I'd be trying to convince her, like, "No, mom, you don't understand." They always have like a moral message at the end. They they always learn something, and she's like, "Yeah, right, motherfucker. Like, don't try to sell that shit to me." Ned Flanders, he's the whole soul of the show. I may have been wrong about my the '60s era cartoons having moral messages. I may have been, I because but I thought they did. Um, no, I think they did. I there was one. I think, to a I think that was extent. a start of uh, the I, government stepping in and saying that you know the cartoons <laughs> had to have a certain amount of educational something Whatever, or other. yeah. So I completely forgot about this. Um, Martin Short, if you don't know who he is, is one of my favorite all-time anything. What it's a voice actor, comedian. Um, Fucking three amigos for life, homie. I, I love Martin Short. There's a character <laughs> I he did um, called Ed Grimley. I did not realize that was Hanna-Barbera. He, that was Hanna-Barbera, Ed Grimley? The Ed Grimley cartoon was Hanna-Barbera. That's weird. Anytime I fuck my hair up, my dad always calls me Ed Grimley because I got like one thing sticking up in the front of my hair or something. He can't let that one go. It's been 30 years. And Well, if it makes you feel better, it's a reference nobody gets unless you're old. Yeah, I mean, basically, and apparently I'm just old enough because he's been flipping me shit for it. I shit you not 25 years now. You should you should tell him you, you, you rem- that uh, you remind him of Fibber McGee. Fibber McGee? Yeah, I, I used to get that one all the time. That, uh, that one in frickin' frack. Which goes a little bit over my head, I got to tell you. So, okay, tell you what. Crap one of, what, one of my favorite, 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 even to this day, uh, cartoons has always been the Adams Family. Yeah. yeah. Right? And uh, uh, the Adams Family and the Munsters actually kind of came out about the same time, both in black and white when I was a yeah. kid. Uh, Adams Family didn't last as long as the Munsters, which was interesting. But uh, maybe Adams Family was too dark. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you think in some ways, oh, but I loved it. I mean, the, the, the all the characters in the Adams, Adams family are just iconic as far as I'm concerned. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. And there was, a. Uh... anyway, the, there's going to be a, uh, according to variety, a new Adams family live action TV series could be coming to television soon, hmm. which would be interesting. <sighs> I, I I would be excited I, to watch that. So here here's a question, and I, I sincerely mean this. Are they going to play this like the guy who originally played in the '60s, Adam's Family? Um, I don't remember his name, but he was a comic genius for the character. Between putting lit cigarettes in his pocket, to all sorts of uh, stuff. <laughs> his cigars, cigars, yeah. and Gomez always had a very long cigar, and in every scene he was lighting a new cigar, and that was a. a Oh gosh, I forgot the name of the cigar company that 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 was a product placement, one of the very early actual product placements. Dutch Brothers, and he always had a Dutch Brothers cigar, and he was always lighting a new one. And uh, they well, they lined the pocket of his jacket with asbestos, so he could just stick keep sticking them in there. <laughs> so 
here's <laughs> there's so, a there's a relic of a bygone era right yeah there. People, huh. so, people hear that that are my age they're like i'm sorry they did what <laughs> so that's my and question then it was three months later that he got mesothelioma yeah right, right. He's in well a class lawsuit now. yeah so that's my question is john Aston who was gomez adam if i'm not Yes. Mistaken. Or yes, are they yes, going to yes, do yes. it like um, Raw Julia? And, and here's my problem. I was just going to bring up Raw Julia as as really stealing the thunder from the original show because his Gomez was so fucking pitch perfect as far as I'm concerned. See, this is the, so. Here's here's going to be my only disagreement is they're they're the Adams family in names only because the '60s one was kooky and it had that '60s kookiness to it and it made it a lot of fun. I mean, it was in the and, theme song. And this is true. Yes. And the Adams family, Raw Julia, fit the '90s because it had that dark, brooding sense of humor. But to but me, a sense of humor, nonetheless, though. But know? yes, but no, here's my question: Are, are they going to do it like completely different? Because you can't. Because no, they're actually saying it's a reboot, and and, and they're gonna they're gonna play it like it. Like the 60s Like, like it was. Yeah, it's going to well, be. And, and I'll tell you what, it's, there's been a few different versions of it, and I've, I've actually really enjoyed <clears throat> all the different versions. I think it's one of those shows that you very much can update to the times. The characters, like you were saying before, are very iconic. So as long as those core characteristics are the same, you can have Wednesday with a, with a brand new iPhone 10 or, or you know, Gomez or, uh, you know, doing whatever like a modern day father would be sure. doing in 2020 you can absolutely update and have it just be the, the new adventures of the new adam so did you know did you guys realize the original gomez adams is still alive is yeah he really yeah, yeah. so he's, john allen austin aston a-s-t-n mm-hmm. he's 90 march 30th 1930 god damn and then we lose raul julia when he's what 40 yeah that was a tragedy yeah that was um the real, the real tragedy, aside from him dying, is that the last thing he did was Street Fighter. I think, no, see, I heard, so, I I read something about it, and I don't actually feel bad about it, because he said he did it for a payday. I mean, look, I, he was the, the most legitimate part of that movie. He, he sold that shit really well, like, better than the movie deserved. Well, because sure. Jean-Claude Van Damme was coked out of his mind, according to all his co-stars, but... Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so according, but see, I, after I read, he did it for a payday for his family. And I'm like, you know, it's a crap movie, but now I don't think it ruins the legacy of an actor because he, he did it for the right reasons. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm a, I, I, now I kind of want to watch it. If there's a way to, if there's a way to send a couple of bucks to his family again, I would. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. I thought that was pretty <laughs> badass, but yeah, apparently he was coked out of his mind. Apparently he was a real pain in the ass to work with, but, um, Apparently he's just a giant druggie. Uh, John von Claude von Damme apparently is just a giant pain in the ass. I've never heard anybody yeah, or, say, or at least was. I I've heard I've heard he's still fairly difficult. What really? Would, I mean, what what is he? Does yeah, he, does what, he even really what would give him the anymore? Or? <laughs> Come on. Oh, apparently him and um, the Green Ranger almost got into a fight. He's uh, which is which legend is legend in his own mind. Right, yeah. Which is funny because uh, oh, Jason David Frank, who played the Green Ranger in Power Rangers, versus Jean Claude Van Damme, I think I'd actually have to take Jason David Frank. Who? <laughs> well, J- J- Jason Jason David Frank actually did fight MMA for for a little while. He wasn't he wasn't very good because he's going up against some killers. He's, but, uh, Van Damme's he, an he, old he man by now, anyway. Well, he was also well, old that's for the thing is he was he was probably in his late thirties when he started in the MMA game. Yeah, and Jean Claude Van Damme is he like. You know, like Rob said, he's old. He's but, an old man now. Yeah. But yeah, there's apparently those two almost got in a fight. It's like, you know, I would almost. Although Chuck Norris would still kick his ass. Yeah, Chuck Norris, yeah. He, isn't, he's one of two, I think him and Jason Dave and Frank or somebody else are the only people who have that level belt in yeah, that style. Chuck Norris was, was the real deal and apparently is still, for being in his late 60s, early 70s, is still apparently a pretty badass yeah, he he was he's definitely <clears throat> always been considered like yeah his movies you can you can say what you will about those but this dude will legit beat your ass legit yeah. but he's it was a real thing no effing around and you will not get a shot off on this guy he's gonna fuck you up that's so right here's an amazing thing we actually have a tie-in in our local area is he's been to a couple local area restaurants and few things around here and everybody I've talked to who has met him around here sees he's a sweetheart of a fella oh hey. I bet he vetted there's. 
there's a world famous restaurant, and I shit you not, world famous a restaurant around here called Poor Reds. We've met people halfway around the world who mentioned, oh, Poor yeah. Reds. It's like we, the we fuck? were in France when we ran into some, some people that said, "Where are you from?" And we said, and they go, "Oh, Poor Reds." And it's like, you, you got to be kidding me. So, <laughs> I mean, so there, yeah. there's so there, Chuck Norris actually owns some property around here. So I, it, it, it kept kind of <clears> quiet, but I think um, it's I in Somerset. I think he owns a vineyard. So I, I, I thought it was funny. We've been all over the place and people have mentioned it. So, it, and apparently he stopped by there and a lot of people said he's just a nice guy, which is something I've universally heard. I've never heard anybody speak ill about him. Yeah. Besides his action pants. Yeah. Well, Hey, you know, that's okay. Hey, everybody's got to have a gimmick. It just, his happens to be, you know, pants with, you know, stretchy crotches. <clears throat> oh, one more thing before we wrap up. Justice league is being reshot. <laughs> well, see, that's Zack well, Snyder's. They, the they, Snyder cut. Yeah, so the, what it is, they change directors midway through. Right. So, look. Well, they change directors about 85% of the way through. Oh, really? I didn't know it was that much. Yeah, so basically, Zack Snyder had shot basically all of principal photography. Um, and when, it basically, his daughter died, <laughs> like, just fucking tragically. Yeah, I mean, heartbreaking, you know, kind of, kind of just life-changing moment. He stepped away. Joss Whedon came in, <laughs> reshot a bunch of things, and then edited the movie in a completely different way than he was planning on on doing it. Um, so ever since then, ever since he left the project, everybody in the world has been calling for the Snyder Cut. So HBO fucking picked it up. And he and Zach the uh, Josh Josh Whedon probably killed the franchise, along with apparently being racist amongst other things, according to some of the people in the movie. Um, the guy who I played, don't know how much I believe that shit, but you I, know. Well, racism is always a charge people to use. But the guy who played Cyborg said they changed his skin tone. There's a bunch of other stuff I've read. Apparently, Josh has been was difficult to work with, but I, who really knows? Um, but. Just want to tell you guys, if if you if somehow in the future you come across it, you got to watch it because apparently it's it's supposed to be nuts. So what they're planning on doing, and they've 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 been kind of back and forth on what the actual plan is because HBO thought they were just going to release it as a movie, but then Zack Snyder's talking about yeah, if it's a movie, it's going to be about four and a half hours long. So I think the current working theory is that they're going to do it as a mini series. Hell yeah. Um, but he said that this, Zach, Zach Snyder came out and when they announced that they were doing the actual Snyder cut, first of all, the world collectively lost their mind. Quite um, but he said that you have not seen any of this movie. He's like, what? Th this movie will be unrecognizable to what you saw in the theater. Yeah. Hey, I got one little bit fi finished just to close out because you were talking about Scooby-Doo. And remember, I talked about Adam's family. Mm -hmm. Did you know that there's an Adam's family tie in with Scooby-Doo? Yes. <laughs> they did an episode where the Scooby-Doo met the Adams Family. Yeah. Uh -huh. Did they ever do one where Adams Family met the Harlem Globetrotters, though? Uh, no. Not the, not the You Adams know what the most family. interesting thing about that, and this is still be the last tidbit, is some of the episodes with Scooby-Doo where they meet the celebrities, those rights don't necessarily belong to whoever owns Hanna-Barbera. Like the Scooby-Doo met the Batman and Robin. Those rights belong to somebody else, which I don't know how that works, but I was really fascinated to learn that. So well, I'll, I'll bet you because uh, Warner Brothers was not about to give away the rights, uh, likeness rights to any of their characters to Hanna-Barbera. Probably. <clears throat> probably. There was probably a license extension where after so many periods of time, it reverts to yada, yada, yada. Who knows? Anyway. So any final statements before uh, the, the old guy turns into a pumpkin? It's been fun. It's been real. Nope. Buy, buy sex coins. <laughs> oh, and uh, 19, uh, 1969 pennies. S, S pennies. Like, er, Send them care of old guy tech. That's right. Uh, that's right. Send them all in. Any penny. Don't even look for the S. Just don't even look at it. Just send us your pennies. Just send me any of 1969 penny. That'll be fine. Just we'll follow through them and we'll let you know if they're worth anything. That's right. <laughs> just be like Soupy Sales. Send it in an envelope and send it our way. <laughs> that's right. And that's another reference we'll have to talk about another day. <laughs> So like like Fibber, McGee, like Fibber McGee's closet, this episode is coming to a crashing end. So ladies and gentlemen, for the California pariah, Jonathan Charney, James, the fat man, Stevens, Ryan, who the hell is this, Preston, and the old guy. The old guy. As always, thank you for listening. Goodbye.